All right, so today we're going to start on what I think people tend to think is the fun part of uh, V-Ray, and that is we're going to actually start artificial lighting. Uh, we'll, we'll create a light fixture, we'll drop it in, we'll start to play around with V-Ray lights, because everybody always wants to be able to do the night render. That's like the gold standard of the best of the best, or at least the sunset render with the lights and, and whatever. So um, part of the fun part of this class is we get to that stage, and you guys will learn how to do it. Um, we, we're going to depart today a bit from your cabin that you've been working on or your artist retreat um, because we have to kind of look at lighting in its own entity first. And then we'll, next class, we'll bring the lights you create today into your scene and start to light the scene. Um, so we're going to talk about kind of how lights work in Rhino and V-Ray um, and then how to make the geometry, et cetera. And you guys are going to make um, two to four light fixtures today that can be rather basic, but you're going to kind of experiment. I'm going to work with two specific types of V-Ray lights. One is a spotlight, and the other is a point light. And I'll show you kind of how those two works. As we go forward, I will show you rectangular lights, but I'm not going to do it today because the settings are a little bit different to understand. So we're going to start with just two basic kinds of lights. Um, and I'm going to actually start first with a spotlight and kind of talk through how that works. Now, when we look at lights in V-Ray and in Rhino, there's kind of different components. There's different pieces of how lights work. And that is that we have the geometry of the light, the part that we can see, and then we also have the V-Ray light that actually lights the scene. And they're two different things. So first off, we need the geometry. We need the thing that holds the light. If you guys look at the lights above our heads, uh, these are fluorescent tube lights, but there's there's something that holds the light to begin with. So we have to make that geometry. In this case, uh, it's a kind of a white frame with a piece of glass that kind of has a texture on it. And so certainly as we look up here in this half of the room, the lights are off, but we can certainly still see the geometry, that, the light fixture, so to speak, of what it looks like. So we need to create that part first. And so I have uh, a couple things in Rhino already open. The first one is just a blank slate. And I'm going to draw, the first one that I'm going to do is going to be a traditional can light, so a traditional recessed light. And I'm going to draw that one out uh, and bring it in because it, it seems to um, work rather nicely in the scene and, and it's kind of a generic light. So I'm going to start with that one. Uh, and obviously the first thing that I have to do is create the, the uh, geometry itself. So let me start at point zero, zero, and I want a diameter. Um, I don't know, let's do a four inch light fixture. I'll do a diameter of four inches. And then let me zoom so that I can see it. There it is. And then let me offset this to create some trim. I don't know, we'll do a distance of maybe three quarters of an inch, like that. And let me take these two pieces and I'm going to extrude them, curve. And I want it to be a solid, yes, but I'm making it as if, because this is going to go up on the ceiling, I want it to be hanging down from 0, 0. Does that make sense? Because I'm going to stick it up above. So we'll do maybe negative 0.25 inches or so. And I'm now starting to create that little piece of trim that's sticking down from the ceiling. Maybe it's a little bit less than that. Maybe I'm going to want to bevel this. right? Remember, I could use a chamfer here. Uh, sorry, chamfer surface. Chamfer surface, distance. Uh, I don't know, let's do an eighth and an eighth. And let's do that surface to that surface. No, oh, it doesn't like me, apparently. Let's do a fillet surface just to round over, see if it'll like that. There we go. I'm just rounding over the trim. It doesn't really matter what you do. The point is, you're going to make the light fixture look nice. And that's the idea. So then if I imagine this hanging up on the ceiling, there's, there's a light bulb that I would see, or some kind of a source of light. So I need to model that as well. So I'm, no, I'm not going to worry about the part that sticks up in the ceiling. We're just going to pretend that this mounts right on the ceiling. But in reality, there would be geometry that goes up in the ceiling with the wires and the, all that stuff. But we don't really care. We only care about the part that we're going to see. So I'm just going to use, um, under the primitive solids here, there's an ellipsoid. 
if I can find it right there. I'm going to use that ellipsoid. And I accidentally clicked twice. There it is. Start of first axis will go from, let me turn on quadrant snap. And I'll go from there across to right there. And I'll go across to there. And then I need to establish the thickness of this. So let's go down maybe negative uh, point 0.25. Why not? And so I create kind of a little pillow looking piece. But if we look at the underside of it there, it looks a little bit like the bottom of a light bulb. Again, I don't care about this top part. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to create a quick surface that I can use as a trim. Type trim. We'll get rid of that little piece there. And now I have just the light fixture hanging down like that. Okay. So now that I have this kind of established, I need to think about my materials. And so the easiest material is obviously the trim. I have to create some kind of a, a material for the trim of this particular light fixture. And so let's go ahead and create under layers. Oh, we have lots of nasty layers here. Let's get rid of all those. Oops. And let me rename this to be uh, light fixture. And then let's create a sublayer for uh, LF for trim. And uh, for bulb. So I'm separating the trim and the bulb. So the trim is all, let me just select everything and I'll put it on the trim layer, change object layer. But then the bulb itself, I want it to go on its own layer, change object layer there. OK, so as I'm looking at this object, obviously the trim needs a material. So I'll go into my material library and I'll load some kind of a trim. I don't need any of these. Let's get rid of those. Oops. All right. So let me load in a material, some kind of a white trim. It could be like white plastic or, or something like that. Let me go to my flash drive, resources, V-Ray, materials. And let's look at plastic right now. I don't have white plastic. I'll use black plastic and then change it to be white. So there's black plastic. And let me just change the color to be white. And so if I preview it, there it is, black plastic. White plastic. Let's rename it. There we go. White plastic. And let me go ahead and apply that to the trim layer. So I'll right click on the white plastic and I'm going to say apply material to layer and it's going to be on the trim layer. And so I'll say OK. Let me also get rid of the delete, the um, default layer. OK. Now we have to think about the bulb itself. And so this is one of those kind of tricky things in Rhino and V-Ray because this particular material, the bulb, is going to glow. It has to glow because that's the nature of it. So we need some kind of a material that glows. And thus far, we don't have a glowing material. So we need to create that. This particular type of material is called an emissive material. It emits light. The one important thing to recognize about a V-ray emissive material is while it will provide some light in a scene, it's not designed to mimic a light bulb and light a scene. So we're still going to have a V-ray light that provides the primary light. But we have to, when we look at the light fixture, when you look at the light fixtures in back, we have to be able to see something glowing because that's well, how we're used to seeing light fixtures. So I'm going to create this emissive material. And it, on your handout here on exercise 222, I have the steps that I'm going to go through to do this. It's also listed out on the course website. If you go to um, the tutorials, V-Ray, and you come down here to emissive material, right there, 8.15. This will walk you through the, the steps that I'm going to take as well. Uh, there's just a few important settings to, to get right. So I'm going to go ahead and create this. And so I'll start with my scene materials. I'm going to right click. And thus far, we've always gone to create material standard. Okay? We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to create material standard. But once I rename this, let's call this bulb. 
okay? But once I create this, I'm going to right click and under our create layer, we've done reflection before and we've done refraction before, but we've never done emissive. So I'm going to make sure that I click on emissive here and it creates another drawer up here at the top for emissive. And that's, that's important. So now I need to go through and I need to change a bunch of settings for um, four different colors. And so we'll reference so that you guys can see it. I'm going to reference it right here. So to mimic an incandescent light bulb, we're going to apply the following settings. The emissive color is going to be 200, 161, and 82. I don't have these memorized, so I have to actually look. And so we'll go back to my V-Ray. And right here, under the emissive color, so emissive drawer color, we're going to type in 200, 161, and 82, kind of an ugly yellow. And we'll go ahead and say, OK, there's my emissive color. Then we're going to go to the next setting, which is the emissive transparency. And we're going to set this at 100, 100, and 100. So we'll go back to V-Ray here. Transparency is going to be set at 100. 100 and 100. And we'll say OK. Next thing, we're going to go to the diffuse color. That's going to be 155, 155, and 155. So diffuse color, 155, 155, 155. And then the diffuse transparency is the last one that we're going to change should be 0, 0, and 0. I think it already is, but we'll confirm. Yep, 0, 0, and 0. So once I have those settings correct, if we look at the material, it's still this ugly yellow. But if you look in here, it's hard for you to see it on the projector. But there's a little bit of glow that's kind of coming off of it. This is not strong enough to really do anything in our scene. We need to up the intensity which is listed right here under emissive, a bit higher. So I'm going to take the intensity from 1. Uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'll go to 10. And when I preview it, you can see that that light appears to start to come on a little bit. I'm going to drop that all the way up to 100. And it's going to be very bright white, which is what I want for right now. And then I need to apply that bulb to my bulb layer. So I'm going to right click on bulb and say apply material to layer and I'm going to put it on the bulb layer and I'll say OK. So now I have a light fixture with a light installed in it. So I have the geometry ready, which is, which is important. So let me go ahead and save this and this is where block references be start to matter. So I'm going to go ahead and go to file and then save. And I actually, on my flash drive, I have a whole folder in my resources under Rhino Blocks. Well, I thought I had a folder for light fixtures. It's obviously not synced between the two computers. So I apologize. But I'm going to save it for today. I'm going to save it into my uh, live demonstrations folder. You would save it onto your flash drive. Today is 222. And I'll call this 4-inch can. Four inch can light, spring of 2017. Just I do this over, in, you know, I, I have lots of can lights, so just be clear. And I'll go ahead and click save. All right, so now I need to kind of see what this looks like in a night scene. And we're going to talk next class about creating the the night scene. But I have a sample night scene available for you to practice with today, so you don't have to worry about the V-Ray settings for it. If you go to the course website and you go to exercise 222, about halfway down, there, be, there, there will be a download a sample night environment to try out your light blocks link. You'll want to download that, and it will download a, a Rhino file for you. I already have that Rhino file open right here. And what it is, is it's a night scene with an infinite plane and a little tiny wall and a ceiling sitting there. So we can kind of see what happens. And so, what I need to do is I need to drop that little can light into my scene. And so I'll go to Edit. I'll go to Blocks. And I'll say Insert Block Instance. And I need to go find my light fixture that I created. 
So we're going to go into today's folder. And there's my 4 inch can light. We'll go ahead and say open. Say OK. Again, link and reference. I'll say OK. And there's my piece. Now remember, I set 0, 0 to be on the top of my light fixture. So it's really easy to drop it in and have it sitting on the ceiling of my building. Now, in reality, I want this to be closer over to the wall. So let me look at it in the top view. And the placement isn't, doesn't need to be precise. But let's get it close to the wall. And let's drop it approximately over there toward the center. So now if I'm looking at my scene, let me go to the Render 1 camera. Oops, set view, Render 1. There it is. We can see the little light fixture. And if I were to render this right now, and we look at the light fixture, OK, there's a little bit of glow that's coming from the light fixture, which it should. But there's not really any good glow on the wall itself. And so what I need to do in my final scene, and so this is one of those critical things to understand. Light fixture geometry, emissive material comes in as a block. But then only in my final scene, so in the case of your assignment, this would be in your master site file, that's where we install V-Ray lights, just like the sun. You only put the sun in that. If you create a light in your light fixture file, even though you can, it won't come through as a block. So that, that V-Ray light won't come through. So now I need to actually create a V-Ray light to mimic this, um, this light settings. So I'm going to go to my V-Ray Lights toolbar right here, and I'm going to choose Create Spotlight. And it's going to ask me for the base of my cone. And so I'm going to go ahead and work with my geometry of my light fixture right here. There it is. And my base of my cone, I'm going to go ahead and turn on Center Snap here. We'll make it the center of my light fixture, we hope. There it is. And it's going to then ask, oops, come on. Uh, there it is. Sorry, it wouldn't click for me. It's going to ask me for a diameter or a radius. I'm going to go ahead and say my diameter. And I want my diameter to be 2 feet. So I'll type 2 and then the foot sign. Now, what the diameter is and what the height is will impact what the light looks like. And I'm telling you right now that a good ratio is 2 to 1, or uh, 1 to 1. And radius to diameter, 1 foot radius, 1 foot in height. Um, diameter would be 2 feet doubled, 1 foot in height. Okay, So it depends on how you want to look at it. If it's diameter to height, it would be 2 to 1. And then I'm going to look at this in the top view here. And I want my height to be 1 foot. So if we look at this little cone that I created, it's two feet wide, one foot tall. But it's up above, it's inside of this piece. Now one of the tricks about V-Ray lights is you cannot have the light source, so the point of this cone, inside of any object, or it won't light the scene. So I need to move this down so that it's just slightly below where my light is. This is close enough. You could fine tune it a little bit and make it even closer. It doesn't really matter. You just can't have it there. So it has to be outside of the light. So we'll go to right there. Now if I go back to my um, under view, I'm going to go to render one. And we can say, OK, there's my little spotlight that's going to provide light for the scene. I still need to make some setting adjustments to this particular light. So when I click on the light itself, we can come over to the properties, and we can see the light properties. And this is another place where we have to make some adjustments. First thing is under intensity, the color, we need to change the color. So right now it's pure white. We're going to change the color to be 255, 214, and 170. And we'll say, OK, it's a little bit more of a peach color. We'll say, OK, there it is. The intensity, I'm going to ignore for just a second, but I'm going to go to the units setting. And under units here, we want something that makes sense to us. 
And for me, the only thing that really makes sense is radiant power, which is watts. We're used to light bulbs being in watts. Oh, I have a 40 watt bulb, I have a 60 watt bulb. This radiant power is essentially doing that. So in this instance, let's go ahead and give myself an intensity of 40 watts. Under options, decay needs to be set for inverse square, which there is. The rest of these settings are fine. So now that I have the settings for the light fixture established, by the way, this is all written out here, all those numbers. Okay. Once I have those set, we're going to go ahead and do a test render. So I'll go ahead and click on the render button, and we'll see what happens in my render frame. So now, I'm getting a nice wash on the wall itself that's coming from my cone. Okay? So this, if you go home, you guys will suddenly be far more interested in lighting. Okay? You'll go home tonight, you'll turn on your light fixtures, and you're going to look at the shadows on the wall. If you have can lights in your hallway or something like that, turn on your can lights, turn the other lights off, and lo and behold, there will be these little cones on your wall. Okay? So we can adjust what's happening with these cones as well by changing the size or the scale of this light. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to layers. And it's, I always think it's a good uh, practice to get into to create a, a layer for lighting. Oops. And then as a sub layer, I'm going to say can light. But since I'm going to do multiple different kinds, I'll just do can light one. And I'm going to change that light to be on the can light one layer. Let me create a new layer, and we'll call this can light two. I'll make it active, and now I can turn off that one. And I'm going to do another one, but I'm going to change the ratio so you can see the difference. So now let me go ahead and create a new spotlight. Same thing, I'm going to snap to the center. The diameter, I'm going to do at one foot. I hope, maybe not. It's really just not liking me right now. Let me do it here. There we go. So I'm going to do the diameter smaller. Ah, let's do it. Let's exaggerate here. I'm going to do the diameter at six inches. And then I will do my height once again at one foot. There it is. Turned out to be down on the ground. Let's move this back up a little bit. So the height was the same, but the diameter changed. Go back to set view, render one. And now I have to go through and, and adjust the settings of this light again. So let me go back to, with this selected, I can go back to properties, to my light, and we're going to change the color, 255, 214, 170. Oops. Units are going to be in radiant power, 40 watts. Decay is inverse square. Perfect. So now I have that set up. And we can look at what the end result is. So let me go ahead and render. And so you see by changing the proportions, now my light is shining almost like a spotlight down on the ground. My cone is very narrow. Okay, So this is a very different look in terms of a spotlight coming down. This is maybe if you wanted a dark room, but you wanted one light to come down on the person lecturing or something like that. Okay, So it's a very narrow beam, more like a, almost a flashlight beam. So I could change this, and I'll do can light 3 for demonstration purposes. Let me go back to layers. And we'll new a sub layer, and this is can light three. We'll make that active. We'll turn that one off. And I'm going to go back through the process. Let me create another can light. And this time I'll do a diameter of four feet with a height of one foot. Oops, that was a radius, sorry. One more time. Uh, diameter is four feet, and my height would be one foot. Let's move this up. All right, so then we'll go back to my render, select the light. 
And this time, under properties, we have to go through the same options. 255, 214, 170, 40 watts, inverse square. There we go. And now when I go back and I render, the cone gets much higher on the wall, and it's a much broader spread. So my point here is that you have to figure out what the style of light is and what's an appropriate spread for that particular light. This might be more appropriate than the first one I did. It's up to you to kind of sort out which one is right. Okay? So this works great for recessed lights in a ceiling where you're not having light coming in all directions. If we had a lamp, on the other hand, the light's coming from all directions, so we need to start a different kind of light. Before I move to that, though, I want to point something else out. And that is that V-Ray likes to play games with you. And it will do this to you, and it will happen more than once to you. And that is that every once in a while, you get a bad light bulb. And there's nothing you can do. It's just a bad light bulb. It's kind of like when you go to Home Depot or go to the store, and you buy light bulbs, and you go screw it in, and suddenly it doesn't work. And you're like, but I just spent money on this light bulb, and it doesn't work. And so you either take it back, or you just throw it out and try another one, and then it works. Okay? V-Ray does the same thing. It's not predictable. You didn't do anything wrong. Sometimes they just don't work. Uh, so usually the sign of it not working is down here. We made changes to intensity and options where it says sampling, shadows, etc. These will all be listed as zeros. There'll be no values in them. Even if you change the values in them, they still won't come on. They're just dead. It's the way it is. Okay, so be aware that that will happen to you. It will happen to at least somebody today in class. It will probably happen to me at some point when I'm lecturing. Okay, thus far I've done three light bulbs and I haven't had any bad ones. Happens. Okay, so let's think about going back and creating a, a, another light. So let me do a file. I'm just going to do a save as on this one and we'll call this lamp. And I'll click save because I can use the same layers. So let's get rid of this. And this time, we're going to create some kind of a floor lamp or something. Okay? And my geometry is probably not going to be the most attractive in the world, but you guys can spend a little bit more time and have something more attractive. So let me go ahead and I'll start with a square. We'll start at 0, 0. And let's do a base of at 1 foot, comma, 1 foot. And we'll do a height of, I don't know, an inch and a half. There it is. I'm going to just draw a little line that goes across the top here, there to there, and create another little piece there. And this would say at one inch, and I don't know, how tall should we make this? Uh, 60 inches, sure. I don't like that this is off center. There we go. Now it's centered. OK, so now I need to think about what's happening up above here. And so in this case, I'm going to build some kind of a shade for this light fixture. And I'll go ahead and I'll create, I'll just do it with a box again. Actually, let me come down here. I'm just going to mimic this. And we'll do maybe 16 inches tall. Let's move this up to the top here. Oops. Move V for vertical. About 60 inches. So you see, I'm starting to create the light. Okay. Number one, I don't want there to be a top and a bottom on the shade. So let me go ahead and explode this so I can get rid of the top and I can get rid of the bottom. And because the light bulb itself is covered by a shade, I'm not going to worry about creating the light bulb inside. If the view was such that I was like sitting in a chair looking up at it, I really needed to see it, at that point I'd create the bulb. But for the most part in, in something like this, the shade is covering up where the bulb would be, so I'm just not going to worry about it. So let me go ahead and join these together. Join. Notice also that I didn't make this go too high. Okay, So it might be, maybe these should overlap a little bit more. Let me move this vertical, I don't know, by negative three inches. Something like that. So they overlap just a little bit. Okay. 
Now it's a matter of assigning the materials once again. So I have my, my base here. That piece will assign it to the trim layer. Change object layer. There it is. And then this is my shade. So let me create a new layer. And we'll call this uh, lamp shade. And let me rename this to be lamp. And the bulb we didn't need, we'll get rid of that. And let me rename this to be floor lamp, like that. So again, I'm trying to stay organized because I'm going to use this as a block reference. So first off, under my materials, we're not going to use plastic anymore, so we can get rid of that. Uh, remove material, there we go. I don't need to worry about the bulb anymore, so we can remove that as well. But I knew need a material for the stand itself. So maybe I want some kind of metal. So let's look in metal. And let's say, let's go into brushed. We'll do a brushed metal. We're going to apply that brushed metal to the stand. So I'll right click and say, apply material to layer. And it'll be the stand layer. And then I need to create a lamp shade material. And this is always a little bit tricky because you have to kind of sort out what, what works and what looks good as part of your lamp shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on scene materials. And I'm going to go to create material. I'm going to go to standard. And I'm going to call this material lamp shade. So I'll, I'll, I'll name it lamp shade. Then under color, right here, I'm going to change the color to be the color of the lampshade that I want. So it's going to be a little bit lighter than, than the default. But let's pick kind of a, a tan color or whatever. Yeah, can we do it in like 20 minutes? Does that work? OK. So I'm going to pick that tan as a color. And I'll go ahead and say OK. And if we preview it, OK, it looks kind of lampshade-like. Okay. But I also want to adjust the transparency a little bit, because I want it to be a little bit transparent. So under transparency, remember black is, is kind of solid. Dark gray would be the next level. If I say OK, eh, it might be a little bit too transparent. So I need something darker than that. I can come down here and pick something a little bit darker, maybe that. That's OK. A little bit of transparency, not too much. Then let's go ahead and apply that to my layer. And this is going to be the shade material. And I'll say OK. And let me make sure that the shade is on the shade layer. Change object layer. And there we go. I'll, at this point, I can go ahead and save this. So I'll go to File, Save. And now I need to bring it into my scene. So let me uh, go back to my sample scene there. And for clarity purposes, I'm going to go ahead and turn off uh, let me create a new layer. We'll call this lamp. We'll make that active. And we'll turn off the spotlight. I also want to turn off this block instance. So let me create a new layer and call that can light. Change object layer. It's going to allow me to turn that one off. I'm doing this. You don't have to turn it off, but I'm doing it so that you can see just the, the lamp itself. OK, so let me create a new layer. And we'll call this floor lamp. Lamp. Oops. Apparently, I've already done a floor lamp before, so we'll call it floor lamp 2. Um, and really, I should probably clarify that this is the V-Ray lights. And then I could create a new layer called light geometry, just for clarity purposes, so that the can light and the floral light will go on the light geometry layer. See, I'm just trying to stay organized. OK, so now with the floor lamp 2 layer active, I'm going to go to file and then place, or excuse me, jeez, I'm in, in design. <laughs> Whoops, edit blocks, insert block instance. And I'm going to go find that floor lamp. There it is. Go ahead and say OK. Go ahead and say OK. Again, it's a linked reference. 
Say OK. And we'll drop this into my little scene here as well. So let me move it, move it over. All right, so now I have my little lamp sitting in the scene. And I need to put a light bulb in it, a V-Ray light. Now, last time we did a light that was a spotlight that came down in one direction. In this case, we need a light that goes out in all directions because that's what this lamp would be. So instead of doing a spotlight, we're going to create this one, which looks like just a sphere. It's called a point light. So we're going to create that point light. So let me make sure I'm on the V-Ray lights. I'm on the lamp layer here. And I'm now going to stick a point light right into this scene. So there it is. Let me switch this into um, ghosted so that we could probably see it. Uh, maybe x-ray would work better. Yeah, there it is. So there's that little point light. These point lights are notoriously hard to click on. They, they like to be kind of hidden. So you click on them a bunch, and eventually you'll get to it. So a couple things. One, I really need to move it so that it's in the center of my light. So let's go ahead and draw a little guideline that goes across here. And let's move that point light so that it's up right there in the center of my view. And then I can get rid of that guide. Notice that it is not contained within any objects. It's floating there in space. That's the idea. I'll select this. I'll go to my properties. I'll go to my light. And we notice that we have something very similar to the spotlight. This time we have a color, which I will change to the same color, 255, 214, and 170. You won't, you won't memorize the emissive colors. You'll memorize this color. OK, so 255, 214, 170. I'll say OK. The intensity, we'll do it at 40 again. But it should be 40 watts radiant power. And my decay should be inverse square, which it is by default. And the rest of these are all just fine. So now I can come back to my um, set view. We'll go back to render 1. There it is. I have my point light inside the scene. And now if I render it, we will get the nice glow of my lamp. Okay, So you notice it's a little bit brighter underneath, which it should be. The inner shade should be lighter than the outer shade. We're getting the square pattern on the ceiling. We're getting the square against the wall. Uh, we're also getting kind of a nice glow that's happening. It's a little splotchy. That's OK. Those are, those are V-Ray settings. It's not something to worry about for today. We'll, we'll finesse those a little bit later on. If you don't like how it's turning out or something's not really right, you need to go back probably to your actual geometry here and adjust the material properties of your lampshade. So if, for example, I change the transparency to be lighter, there it is much lighter, I would save this. We'll go back to my scene here. I'll go to Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. Maybe. There it is. And this was the floor lamp. Let me update that. Replace existing material because I edited the material. There we go. And then we do a render of it. And you can see that the materials change. It's a little bit lighter, et cetera. I could also change, for example, the color of the material. So I did it as tan. But maybe I really want it to be purple, because for some reason I want a purple room. There it is, purple. We'll save this. And we'll go back to my edit, blocks, block manager. Come on. There we go. And we will update that. Uh, 
Oh, you know what? I think maybe I forgot to save it. We'll see. Nope, I saved it. And suddenly my lampshade is purple. Okay? And that's going to then tint the light in the scene more the direction of purple. In reality, I could also tint the color of the light. I did it as kind of a, a normal incandescent light. I could push that in a different direction and we could light the room in purple or, or whatever is, is your choice. For the most part, you're gonna stick with kind of the standard color light. Okay, so now I've done that, but sometimes people want something a little bit more exciting, so I'll show you one more little example of something that you can do just for the fun of it, and that is doing neon, because neon's kind of fun. Okay, so let's do one more, and I'll just do a save as on this one, and we'll call this neon 2017. And I'll click Save. All right, and then let's get rid of this geometry. Let's create a new light. We'll call this neon. There we go. And we'll call this. OK, so then I have to create the geometry of it to begin with. So um, let's do, hmm, draw this in the top view for a second. I don't know what my scale is. So let's do, there we go. I just wanted kind of a general size here. Uh, and then let's go ahead and draw OK. So now I have this little line that's established. I need the cross section of this for the tube. Zoom extends. There it is. So we need the cross section of the tube. Let's go circle. Oops. Turn on my object snap. There we go. Uh, diameter, I don't know, half inch. Rotate 3D. And let's drop that up. Now, one of the things about neon is that uh, typically you have to round the corners a little bit. So let me go ahead and do a fillet on these. Fillet, if I can type. And we'll do a radius of a half inch, that's fine. Fill it. Now it's becoming far less exciting. Let's do it as. Let's see if we can make it a little. There we go. Get rid of those. Get rid of that. And let me join those together. And we'll make sure that this lines up. Oops. Looks like I did a terrible job on that. Let's try that one more time for my cross section there. And we'll do 0.5 and rotate 3D. There we go. So now we did a sweep before. So I'm going to do the same thing. Oops. Fillet radius 0.5. Missed that. There we go. Now we'll do a sweep. One rail. Oops. Sweep one. Select rail. Select cross section curve. Is that okay. Now I've created the tube. Okay. So with this tube, I need to apply an emissive material. So let's create that emissive material. So I'll click on V-ray materials. Create material standard. We'll call this neon. 
and I'll say OK. And now under Neon, we're going to create a new layer for Emissive. There it is. And now we need to adjust things. So I'll go back to my default settings, um, which I have pulled up here. First thing is the Emissive color 200, 161, 82. So we'll go back. Color 200, 161, 82, except you know what? I want it to be neon, so we're going to pick something like red. So there. Under transparency, 100, 100, 100. OK. Diffuse color. 155. And this is all black. Let's make sure neon is applied to my tube. So I'm apply material to layer, neon tube. There it is. And then I need to save this. So we'll go to File Save. But to make this a little bit easier to place, I'm going to take this neon tube. I'm going to move it hopefully from right there to 0, comma 0. Zoom selected. And then we're going to rotate 3D from 0, comma 0. And we're going to stand it up so that I can drop it into my scene a little bit easier. But I also want to make sure that it's sticking out from the wall ever so slightly. So let's move it just a little bit in this direction, like that. So it's a little bit away from the wall, maybe a little bit more. There it is. So let's go ahead and save this. And now I need to drop it in. But before I do, I do want to make sure my intensity goes up on this. So let's try maybe 50, like that. And then we'll save it. And then let's bring it into my scene. Now, it's not necessary that you create a Neon 2. I just like to show you fun stuff. Okay, So let me go ahead and place that in. I'll go to File, and then Place, or Edit, Blocks, Insert Block Instance. Let's find the Neon. And we'll drop that in there. Let's move this. on my wall, like that. And then we can go ahead and render this again. And something happened, and it didn't load the material correctly. Nope, it didn't. Let me go back to my neon here. Change object layer. And make sure that this is applied. And let me save it. Oops. Manager. Let's update it. And let's try it again. There it is. So now we have the glow of the little neon. All right, so in this case, the neon is not going to light the room as a whole. You still need other lights in the room, but you can do these kinds of glowing things should you want to as part of your building. Okay? Um, we'll talk about rectangular lights a little bit later on. Notice it's obviously glowing there, but it's also glowing against the reflection of the lampshade. This is part of why V-Ray is so good, because we can mix lights together. 
Um, so what I want you to do today is to create several light fixtures. The hope is that you'll be able to use these light fixtures going forward as part of your, your process. But it's a lot about experimentation today and learning. You got your exercise 222 handout, but you also got your assignment 204 handout. And your 204 handout is to create two light fixtures that you will use in your scene. And when you create those light fixtures, um, they're going to be far more um, specialized than the ones you're creating today. But you really have to have an understanding of how these lights work. You're going to create two different light fixtures. And you're, one's an exterior light fixture, one's an interior light fixture. And you're going to give me renderings both during the day and at night. So we'll cover kind of how those work. The idea there is that you want to see what the geometry looks like and what the materials look like and the texture mapping during the day. And then at night, you want to see how it casts shadows. Okay, So we'll go over this a little bit more, but this is obviously the direction we're going. So today should be fun. Enjoy yourself. Play around with it. See what these lights look like. See what you can create. Um, and then you'll post them at the end of class. Are there any questions? I know it's a lot to take in. I know there's a lot of specific settings, but it is all written out so that you can go back and reference the colors that I picked and that sort of thing. Remember that your bulbs may be dead. It happens. If you're rendering and they don't show up, there's two things to check. One is your light inside of an, a closed object, in which case it's not casting light anywhere. That's number one. Number two is um, check to see if your light bulb is just, in fact, dead and didn't, didn't, didn't turn on. Okay. And uh, with that, I'll let you go.